the Hex, your source for Warhammer Underworlds and under 30 content creators that you should go check out. Uh, today, I'm your host, Phil, and with me as always, my co-host, Davey. How you doing, Davey? I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I mean, I know the joke is that this is never under 30, but uh, man, we might have come up with 30 things. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like a lot. <laughs> counting everything up and it's like, oh my goodness, they just keep yeah. going on and on. Uh, but yeah, it's a good problem to have. Um, lots of content creators. That is the topic for today. We are doing something a little bit different. We are, instead of talking about a specific topic about the game, we are going to talk about all the other folks out there who also like to talk about this game. Um, so we've never done this before to just try and compile what we are aware of. That's, that's um, not actually true. Our second oh, episode not? ever was, was uh-huh. exactly this. All so right. a mere 78 episodes later, we're, uh, way, we're giving our toe back in. <laughs> <laughs> way, way back in the day. Yeah. Uh, there's, there was a few fewer uh, folks to have to think about back then. Yeah. Um, well, then some of it was also like, you know, on our last episode, we reached out to the community and asked for some input and just had such an amazing response. And we're like, well, look, like, there's a lot of people putting stuff out. And a lot of the responses we got were from some of these other community creators out yeah. there, community uh, members, content creators out there. Like, let's, let's remind people, you know, cause honestly, like I'm, I think I was aware of almost all of these. I, there were a couple that I found that I, I didn't know about uh, in the process of this, but like, I didn't always have them remembered at the same time. So we're, we're trying to um, do something like that. Agreed. And, and so uh, we're just, basically gonna run through everything um just sort of give just say who they are what they're up up you know what what their deal is and uh just let you know that you can go check them out um and sort of just try to spread the love here a little bit um our normal topics usually has us start with some community shout outs uh (laughs) obviously this episode kind of just is that section yeah uh but it is worth pointing out um do a little bit of self-publicity here we have a tournament that we are hosting uh coming up here in about a month and a half yeah um the next next hex because <laughs> i yeah name uh, wip work in progress <laughs> yeah 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 uh gonna be hosting on august 8th or nope august 7th yep. that is a sunday i believe yep uh over at noble night games in fitchburg wisconsin uh if you're anywhere nearby and you feel like you want to come by uh hang out roll some dice we'd be happy to have you um it's a nice air-conditioned space, so weather shouldn't be a problem. And uh, yeah, it'll be yeah. fun. And last time we had what? Uh, I think we ended up with four- 16. 16. I was going to yeah. say 14. Yeah. Quite a few uh, for a local tournament. So hoping to have the same and maybe a little bit better numbers again this time. Yeah. And we're going to be championship format, best of three, um, with the timetable to come. Uh Ideally, with the release of this episode, I'll have a events uh, segment on our site linked into it. You can take a look at that. Yeah. So uh, we'd love to see your smiling faces. <laughs> Come play. Yeah, would be great. Uh, but yeah, so before we dive in and talk through all these other great content creators, uh, what the hecks have you been up to, Davey? Man, a lot, actually. Uh, I finally... A mere 10 months after the previous installment released another uh, entry for that Hexodus blog where I try to work my way through a bunch of different warbands. So hey. uh, yeah. <laughs> by, at this rate, you might get all the warbands out by the time you retire. Yeah, well, they would have to stop releasing warbands. Like the game <laughs> will have to die. And then I think uh, roughly 45 years later, I should be caught up. So <laughs> something something along those yeah, lines. Yeah. Yeah. Seems fine. Seems um, good. No, but uh, I did one on Grimwatch. Uh, you can go check it out. It's uh, on on our uh, website. I had I had fun doing it. I had fun playing the games, um, and I had fun uh, digging into a warband that I really hadn't played very much. Uh, I'm on to the next one. Theoretically, the next uh, entry in that is going to be Cunning Crew, and uh, I am about done painting them. I'm real happy with the paint job on them, um, and uh, that's that's a little bit of a rarity for me. Usually, I 
I get part of the way through. I'm like, oh, this is terrible and I'm terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> that feels good. But uh, got to try them out. Uh, they're a little too cunning for me. I, I was getting my butt kicked a little bit, but that's all right. It felt like there was a lot to learn and uh, had some really good games with them. Yeah. Uh, Sk- Skyler got his revenge on me with his, uh, he really took me to, took me to town. It was funny because uh, uh, Brian was walking away. He's like, uh, you can do this, David. I was like, nope, no, nope, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I am about four or five glory in the hole and I know he's got some scores still coming. So yeah. this is, this is for pride at this point. Mathematical impossibility. Yeah. It was one of those things where you're like chasing crits the whole game. You're like, man, I, yep. I've messed up if that's what I'm doing. So, uh, but what about you? What's been going on with you? Uh, not a ton, but I did get back out to our, uh, to get play some games with our local folks. And that was great. Um, got two games in with the lizards. Um, as this season's meta has shifted, I have found that I'm having a harder and harder time actually playing the, this, this flip strategy that I have with them. Mm, so yeah, um, we'll see. I, I had a truly awful game against uh <laughs> brian's um dread pageant i just a complete memory lapse where he played i can't remember what it's called but it's that ploy that lets you swap the places of two feature tokens um uh, one in dark opponent. inversion yeah da- he played yeah, dark inversion FBMD, yeah early and i was just like yeah whatever it's fine um <laughs> promptly i can see where this is going <laughs> forgot that I, he had even done that and I was just like it's yeah it's whatever um get to the re- end of round one and I'm like delve and I'm like oh no that's right he swapped <laughs> where to go so I <laughs> should have been being more aggressive so I could get to the mm-hmm. objective tokens and just totally forgot that that had happened because I was too caught up in everything else and at that point, I was too far away from the other objective tokens to be able to score anything off of objectives until yeah. round three. So I was like, well, pretty <laughs> sure I lost the game for myself because I forgot that that token wasn't an objective. Dark Inversion, heavily featured in our uh, Hidden Gems episode. So. Yeah, it's a good one. It's one where like, I don't think it would even cause any problems if you could tell the tokens apart Mm. but because you can't tell the tokens apart once you switch them it's so much harder to remember which one's which yeah um it's a weird card weird experience for other folks out there get good at playing memory because yeah (laughs) people dark inversion you and you might need to remember i've been on both sides of it i think uh skylar might have been getting ready to flip something and he was like right as he's about to delve it he's like oh yeah, this, uh, this isn't Oops. an objective, is it? <laughs> like, no, it's not. Still yeah. got me, but uh, yeah, I've, I've usually I'm the 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 one making that mistake. Um, yeah, cool. Well, it was yeah. great to have you back out. Yeah, good to not be super sick and be able to play games again. No doubt. All right, so I think the most logical way for us to organize this, uh, just truly a gargantuan number of content (laughs) creators is to just go down by type of content because i think it just gives a natural way to organize them so sure and there's people who prefer one you know type of content there's there's omnivores that take it all in and there's some that dwell in one particular area so yeah yeah so you know for whatever part of content that you like best uh you you know pay attention to which ones you want to check out the most uh but we'll start with podcasts it's sort of our deal uh so this is the best and greatest of content the greatest of content obviously (laughs) um where people feel that they can just talk about whatever they want and expect people to listen (laughs) (laughs) but uh so we've got we got a just a handful uh here I think um, one that other folks are probably aware of uh, the most here is Path to Glory. Um, So Path to Glory is run uh, by Amon, and they do... uh, It used to be that they were doing a lot more 
just varied topics covering, you know, warband breakdowns and doing strategy and, you know, a whole range of different topics uh, lately. And I guess I'd say what last three to six months. Yeah, it's been a lot more just covering the new releases, talking about new cards, yeah. um, doing sort of the updates stuff, which which to be fair, uh, because they labor like insane people to uh, drop like five episodes all at once. Yeah, to cover everything when it uh, does the does what they do these days, just like it's a uh, feast or famine for underworlds lately. Um, thanks to, I don't know, supply chain issues. Who knows? But yeah, uh, yeah, they, they may get back to it. And it would depends on what Jason Murray and Zach, um, who are, who are now on that after, uh, Jonathan retired, um, what they can get to, but, uh, it's a great place to go when the new releases drop because they, they put that huge amount of effort in huge amount of labor in, yes. um, to, to make that happen. So I'll, always have stuff ready to go day of release well not day of release the day of the uh embargo lifting embargo being lifted yeah Yeah. so you can check out card images get the reviews you know if 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 you want to know about all the cards before you buy stuff usually path to glory is a great great stop for that stuff for sure what is another podcast that you think folks should know about I think uh, Battle Mallet is great. Uh, I actually just realized I was only halfway through their last episode. Uh, and so mm-hmm. I was listening to them, to them today uh, and talk about Exile Dead. And I've already mentioned this on the podcast a little bit. Um, they recently took a, a deep dive into that. And they've been uh, they've been doing this thing that I think is great to see from uh, creators wherever they are. Uh, and they find that niche um, where say, Hey, you know, what is not really being paid to uh, paid attention to nearly as much as, and in their case, it was rivals and rivals plus. Yeah. Uh, and so they looked at it. And so this is a great way uh, to think about factions. I thought it was a great series. If you are just getting in, you're like, I, I don't know what faction I want to start with or like, but it's, it's a, it's an awesome way to like have an intro to all these different factions. Uh, and furthermore, from the perspective of the format, you're most likely to play as a new player, which is rivals or rivals plus. Um, so Jason, Jared and Tress, uh, they, uh, get along real well. They're just real pleasant to listen to. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little jealous of their, uh, uh, music interstitials and, uh, theme song. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, they're great and definitely worth, worth the listen. Uh, they, I know their big push that the original format of this was, it was the kind of like the road to, uh, Nova, uh, mm, each, mm-hmm. each year. Um, and so I would fully expect for them to be at Nova. I think they were just talking about it uh, recently, but they're out of the rally area. So very nice. Yeah. And Nova's coming up relatively soon, right? That's that's end of August, isn't it? Yeah. The very end of August, uh, maybe bleeding to the start of September. I, I can't remember. It's always like this challenging thing where it's coming right up before the school year starts for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, I but would it, like to do it. I, I'm daydreaming <laughs> about doing it. So, yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> it'd be so nice to be able to go to all the major tournaments. But I know. That's <laughs> pretty tough. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. I, I have not actually listened to Battle Mallet myself, but mm. knowing that they do Rivals and Rivals Plus mostly, that is a pretty interesting uh, option. That's like you said, it's not something that everyone's covering. And I know that as we try to continue growing our local scene, that is the sort of first stop for everybody. And so being able to direct people to a lot of good rivals and rivals plus content could be very useful. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, to be clear, I think they're going to, they're, they're not limited to that. You know, they, this yeah. most recent one, they were talking uh, from a championship perspective about exile dead, but, uh, but it's, it's really great that they've kind of found that uh, and focused on that for a specialty. So, yeah. Um, that's kind of it, right? Like there's, uh, what else is out there for podcasts? These yeah. Days? I mean, so technically crit cast by John Wynn Reese is still around, but for the most part, he's shifted off to kill team. Yeah. Um, so you really don't see much in the way of underworld's content from him anymore. Um, I don't remember the last time I saw anything come out for underworlds from him. So, uh, maybe, someday but i i kind of get the feeling that he is he is leaving underworlds behind so crit cast 
uh, you could go check out some of the older stuff if you have certain factions or certain things that you're interested in, but um, probably not one that to expect new content for. Yeah, the one I would say about that is that's worth if you if you were to only go check out one episode. They've got one about the right to respond, um, and I should yes. know what episode it was. It's in the six or seven range, somewhere in there. It's yeah, um, it's fairly early, but but it's a sort of game philosophy, design philosophy, and I thought it was just excellent listening. Um, really, really good stuff from like a kind of uh, thousand thousand yard view or whatever. From, yeah, from, yeah. Um, and I, I thought that was uh, that that'd be worth your time. And it's a pretty evergreen topic, too. Definitely. Um, and then there's actually a, a fairly significant number of podcasts that are no longer creating content at all, or at least as far as we're aware, <laughs> as, yeah. as far as we know, they are they're not going to continue making anything. Um, so there's the Crit Def podcast. Uh, they're just a handful of episodes there um we've got battle for salvation they did a number of or did, they were running for quite a while until pandemic hit um yeah. and so i i don't remember i mean there's a pretty wide variety of topics but i'm sure there's things to be able to go check out there uh chatting if nothing else you should go listen to the uh, intro music for the first time. <laughs> yeah if you just <laughs> if you just need some musical entertainment uh yeah. they, they can also provide that the hot uh, legs always lots and lots of uh work put in to the music there uh we got chatting crit um r.i.p man i really yeah. like that when those guys were doing it tom bond uh michael carlin and then yeah. uh, some of their other crew would rotate in uh those guys were just uh, true, true gentlemen of the of the game. Really, really enjoyed their conversation. It was it was some pretty high level stuff, and yeah, um, and I just uh, I love the attitude they brought, and uh, yeah, I'm really sad that they're not putting content out anymore. But. And uh, a number of topics that are not like meta or uh, necessarily game state specific um you could kind of just go check those things out at any time i i would assume i mean yeah. i guess can't can't guarantee if as the rules continue to change there'll be some drift yeah. probably but a lot of their topics are fairly applicable no matter what so um some good stuff to go check out there um got the ready for action podcast and claim the city yeah um all good shows. Um, I mean, there there is a lot of work. A lot. Of, I mean, I guess I don't know if work is necessarily the right word, but it's a time investment to be able to do this. Uh, recording is not super quick, um, especially if you do editing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it it sort of goes to show that there are you know more podcasts about this game that are no longer creating content than there are that are continuing to create content so um it's all great shows if any of the, those folks would like to come back and make more content we would love to hear more content from them yeah uh, so if you're listening <laughs> make more content uh, you know uh, what we need to do we, we uh we need to take a exile dead approach here we need to like frankenstein together Use the force <laughs> dynamic, and we'll create a we'll create a uh, electro zombie podcast out of out of uh, the broken pieces of these other yeah. podcasts. The battle for chatting for actions, <laughs> defense of the city. Uh, yeah, Perfect. there we go. Yeah, rolls off the Lit. tongue. Yeah. Perfect. Um, yeah, but that that is all the podcasts, at least that we are aware of. Um. Lots of good content to go check out if listening to content is what you like. Mm. These are all good things to go listen to. Uh, they have a little bit of something for everybody uh, that plays this game. So definitely go check them out. Um, if there are any, I mean, I guess this this goes for all of these, but I feel it's it's worth saying now. If there's any of these where like per topic where we get to the end and you're like, why didn't you say this one that I love that I listen to all the time or that I watch all the time or that you create, you know, that you create, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you are somebody who is laboring to 
you know, provide entertainment or content or whatever, you know, sort of level of content you are creating, uh, let us know so that we can let other folks know. Yeah. Because, you know, as we said at to start, we found a few things here that we were not familiar with. Um, so yeah. just want everybody to be able to find and appreciate all of the underworlds that there are. Yeah. And everything here uh, that we talk about, we're going to, we're going to have uh, in a post uh, It's not really part of Hexodus, but it'll be somewhere in and around there and available for people to use um, even if it's super bare bones. So if we have somehow missed your content, uh, let us know. We'll make sure that it's included on that page. Um, yeah. And definitely. apologies in advance if that happened. Uh, and we'll, we'll try and shout you out in future community, um, community shout out sections. If that is the case. Definitely. All right. So on to YouTube, um, there has been, I would say a pretty nice growth in the YouTube level of content. YouTube, I guess was probably even more time <laughs> than yeah. podcasting. So yeah. kudos to all of you folks for uh, putting in all that filming time and editing to mm. create nice uh, videos for folks to check out. But uh, where would you send folks first? Where where do you want uh, to start? I mean, I think the big name is uh, Tabletop Sydney. Uh, Benji and his yep. crew just do a tremendous job. Uh, Benji uh, edits video, has is in some uh, kind of video production as his uh, paying job. And so sure. he brings that expertise for just really high quality video. Um, and uh, they've had a pause, which for them has felt like forever. Yeah. For anyone right. else, it would just be like the time between regular episodes or whatever. Um, but uh, when they're when they're clicking, they're releasing, you know, one or two episodes a week, uh, just kind of a, a tremendous level of output, especially for the, the quality that they do. So, yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I like a lot of things about it. I, uh, you've, you've seen some of them, right? I have. Yeah. yeah. I, I really, I think the thing that I like the most, um, about their videos is they always make a point to sort of talk through some of like the thoughts of like what they were trying to accomplish sort of like, well, in this situation, this is what I was thinking through and I like, can sort of see them like work through it again after the fact. Mm. Um, which you can't always get, um, in a blog very well, or you can't necessarily always get, um, I mean, we, we do that a little bit when we try and do our audio, uh, battle reports, but I think it's good having the two players sitting there right after the game, fresh in their minds, being able to actually point to and like re configure the board to be like, well, when it was like this, this is what I was thinking about. It's like, mm -hmm that really helps you get an idea of like, what was the strategy? What were some of the mistakes? What are some of the lessons learned so that you can see it and try and take that in uh, right. for your own lessons, which I think. And, is and also they have uh, usually Benji as that uh, third party uh, behind the camera who will ask and clarify. Uh, yeah. And, and often they're pretty good at uh, uh, catching and correcting mistakes because they have that uh, third person there who's, not trying to think about like, these are all the cards I have in my hand and right. getting all steps ahead. So I was able to kind of, uh, identify that. So, um, that's kind of unique to them is, is that, uh, during the game discussion, definitely, uh, it does make for, uh, basically full, full length, uh, games. So the videos yes. can often be relatively long, but that's fine because they're, they're filling it up with the discussion. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and like, I mean, I'm sure everyone's aware of this, but like if if you're going to do videos and you're like, I don't have time to watch every single play in the video, a uh, great, great little cheat is to set it to playback at two times speed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and actually, I, it just occurred to me, uh, Benji would be deeply disappointed in me if I didn't point out that they always uh, they're fully painted. Yes. So yes, they, yes, they yes. Blitz out uh, for if I painted stuff as fast as they are able like paint them, it would be embarrassing. Um, I would not want that to be on camera, but they do a great job <laughs> in a short time frame. So yes, yeah. yes, they are, they are always, 
uh, camera ready, I would say. Uh, those, yeah. those models are always beautiful, ready to go for close ups yeah. and everything else. So, yeah. And some of them are gorgeous because some oh, of them yeah. are not just something they painted to get ready in time. Some of it's, uh, some of that crew's personal, uh, yeah, uh, painting. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, a great, great series and, uh, glad they're back, uh, in the, in the mix. Yeah. Uh, so one that, is also doing a decent amount of production these days is the critical focus channel. Um, mm. So I haven't actually watched any of their episodes yet, but I am aware that they've been putting out quite a few episodes. Um, have you checked them out? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I actually caught, I think their first few and even right from the start, they're doing a lot of nice touches where you know, you've got a glory tracker on each side. Um, you know, and they'll, they'll have a little like pop a, pop a card up when somebody's inspired and, you know, here, here's their card that's now inspired. Now here's the fighter that's attacking this fight. They'll show those things. And then, you know, like school, this fighter died and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so a lot of those kind of fun touches, um, and, uh, video angles are pretty good. Um, it's, uh, it's the two, two fellas. So I think the host goes by a gummy toot. Gummy yeah. Tute, um, on Discord, um, and he and a buddy are are playing through a lot of different a uh, lot of different war bands. They'll do some cool series where the you know like mm -hmm. who's the best Stormcast. So have all the Stormcast <laughs> uh, face off in in a bracket, and um, uh, yeah, I, it's yeah they've they've got some good ideas for trying things out to keep your attention and. Um, they, uh, you know, it's also when people are enjoying their game, which they seem to do when they're playing that, like that translates real well. So. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and, and that goes for any kind of content. Like if, if people love making it and it's going to come through and people will generally enjoy it, um, you can, you know, get over a lot of hurdles of, you know, production values and, you know, worrying about like how technical everything is or how, mm -hmm. how good everything is from a like audio visual standpoint if you are just being able to express uh good ideas and the joy of a game uh, yeah. making it entertaining yep uh speaking of enjoying a game uh I'll, I'll jump to miscast table i'm guessing you probably haven't this these guys don't have a ton of episodes out uh just yet and it looks yeah. like they've done a few different things but uh two gentlemen that are playing each other and it's the same thing where like I, I just found myself smiling watching these guys because they they were like i don't know it was it was good sportsmanship they're enjoying the game and uh it's also one that's sort of edited for brevity so um mm -hmm. that they'll go through a game um pretty pretty quick um i i uh i'm a broken record at this point but it's good dishwashing uh <laughs> viewing for me because yeah i can i can get through a battle report in about the time it takes to do all the dinner dishes and get them put away yeah. And, and there's something to be said for that. Um, you know, sometimes you want the whole game so you can see all the decisions and stuff, but other times mm -hmm. it's nice to just have something that's nice and compressed. I, yep. you're right. I haven't watched them, but I, you know, I'm, I'm always aware of a lot of the stuff that's going on. Um, not everything. There's a few in here that I haven't heard of before, but, um, I was aware of these guys, uh, haven't checked them out yet, but, um, that, that compression is nice when you know that there's like some dead time in games that can be cut out for uh, people. Mm. Uh, so this next one, um, so, so we're getting into some of these that we are less familiar with. Um, there's, I guess, at least I'm not familiar. There's two here that are actually not uh, by English speaking folks. Um, yeah. So the Spanish language one, um, I will have, we'll have the names of these groups linked um i don't i don't want to like mess anything up also <laughs> uh it looks like we are trying to figure out like what do these translate to and uh, it seems like maybe uh for our show the spanish one is uh gonna go against our uh potential <laughs> uh no no cussing uh rules so we'll we'll just leave it in the notes for you and you can go check yeah. it out yourself but uh yeah, so they they do a Spanish language coverage of Warhammer Underworlds, which is great. Um, nothing I've actually heard of or seen. I might go check them out just to see what the videos are like. Yeah, uh, obviously, I 
well, not obviously, but <laughs> I, I don't know a lot of Spanish, so I probably wouldn't <laughs> be able to keep up very well. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, great to know that there's uh, folks putting out content outside of the uh, English speaking yeah. world. There's La, La Prima Sfera is uh, the Italian language one. Uh, and it looks like the first sphere, they have a, a Tau warrior from 40K as their emblem, and they do more than just Underworld. So I think mm, it's... Okay. I know that Tau and 40k have different spheres of expansion, so I'm assuming it's a reference to that. But they have they have a couple, sure, a uh, couple games. So I don't know if they're getting more into it, or uh, we'll see how that goes. But if uh, if you're someone who would prefer some Italian language content, that's available for you there. Yeah, yeah. And I know, and I and from Discord, we know that there's tons of folks playing in Italy and Poland and Czech Republic and Germany and Russia and you know there's plenty of folks out there. There's gotta be other stuff. Uh, but this is what we could find. So if there's other folks creating content or if you're one of those folks creating content in other languages and other places, let us know so that we can hook you up to everybody else who's listening to our show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, a bit of an older show, um, goes all the way back, I think, to the early Shadespire days is Agents mm. of Sigmar. Uh, so yep. this is Robin and Pete. Uh, looks like maybe they also have a podcast these days as well. Yeah, I just stumbled across that. It, I don't think it's generally, they had maybe one episode that covered Underworlds out of the eight or nine they have out, but it looks like okay. they're dropping them. And I, it may just be their their videos, so I didn't didn't research it these these guys are covering quite a few games so they they were doing some mm-hmm. yeah. uh you know not all gw games and that sort of thing but they're they're a really really enjoyable couple of guys um uh, they have scaled back some of their underworlds coverage um yeah based on the things that they've been enjoying the most lately but uh they'll they'll still uh, dip into that too um i watched for a while i watched every single thing they put out as soon as it came out yeah because uh, they were they were heads and shoulders Head, head and shoulders above everything else that was being put out at the time. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah. Way back in the early Shadespire days, they were one of the only YouTube groups that I was aware of. Um, I watched a lot of their episodes early on. Yeah. Um, they did good stuff. Um, much yeah, more it, of just yeah. like, hey, we're two guys who like playing board games. We're just going to show you what we're doing and be like, hey, here's, you know, our decks. They, that's actually something I really liked that they would do. Um, at least they'd, in their early episodes, they would do like deck show your hands. Yeah, yeah they, would, well, they br- deck breakdowns, and then it would also be like as they're playing, they would have a heads up display of like this is what they have in their hands. You know, yeah, like, oh. yeah. So you can kind of different s- way to watch it because you're you're like, you know, other ways, uh, other times you're just trying to guess. Like, okay, I think mm-hmm. by moving here, this player is representing that they have you know whatever they they didn't right. do a push, so I think maybe they have chum or whatever. Here you would see that they did have it in hand, so you'd, it'd help you understand why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, and I always thought that was pretty cool. So, um, it's fun, fun content. Uh, good stuff to go check out. Um, but like you said, they have been doing less Underworlds lately. So, mm. um, hopefully, they still keep doing Underworlds. But if not, you know, sometimes you you got to follow the passion, right? You got to do what yeah. makes what's what you're enjoying, so that other folks enjoy. It. Yeah. Uh, and then, so uh, similar to the podcast, uh can you roll a crit the video wing of uh what crit crit cast yeah crit yeah. cast uh, is the name of the podcast uh so again john one reese doing uh his coverage there this is just the youtube sort of wing of that mm-hmm. and again um much more kill team these days probably not gonna see much if any coverage of underworlds coming out of there anymore um but has some older stuff that is still relevant yeah, I think we may still see it occasionally at new release time. He, he kind of gets a spike when a, a new release drops. Um, yeah, we'll put some stuff out. But uh, by and large, that's out, outside of that. Uh, you know, uh, again, if you if you want, if you're just trying to gorge on first impression <laughs> stuff, then, uh, then that's yeah. available to you. Get everyone's opinions. Yeah. Uh, and then there's just just a couple that are no longer creating content, uh, although <laughs> miniature fight club uh yes. they did not do very many episodes but man they really like they spent a lot of time on production <laughs> yeah. values and it, yeah. it was pretty great i i don't care if the decks are no longer valid if they are like relic decks 
uh, you know, I don't care about any of that. Everybody, everybody needs to watch one of these videos once just to enjoy. It was a thing where they were putting it out. I was like, there's no possible way these guys can sustain this. This looks like so much. Work yeah, it was, it was way, way lots. <laughs> but um, man, I loved it while they're doing it. So yeah, uh, do yourself a favor. If you haven't seen a miniature fight club video, uh, go check it out. Um, yeah, pretty great. Yeah. Um, very entertaining. Uh, all right. So that is all of the video content that we've got. We're now into the uh, very different kind of content to can digest uh so all the blogs all the uh written content so there's actually a few different categories of this but the actual blogs um that are going right now um uh, a number of them are fairly regular um i would like to start by shouting out uh set the tempo um what's that and, now who yeah i know right <laughs> uh so Previously, Matt, uh, now Compaq uh, from the Discord taking over, uh, just putting out a wide range of topics, trying to cover a whole bunch of different things. Um, Compaq has been putting out some pretty great stuff lately. Uh, recently had some uh, Exile Dead mm. coverage that was pretty solid. Um Nice thing about having the blogs is that you can sort of, um, you know, you can you can mix in visual media, you know, images of cards and things into the write ups so that it's easier to digest some of the concepts. So you don't have to just try and remember everything that's being spoken. Right. Um, and I think that they, they do a really good job of uh, sort of walking back and forth between like here's all the written thoughts, but then also, you know, incorporating those other pieces and mm. um, just have always really liked the stuff that comes out of set the tempo. So definitely uh, shout out there. Um, and I think that's a great place to go if you want a blog to start with. Yeah, what pretty is, tremendous. There, there are a number of other good ones, though. So where else should folks go to get blog content they can read? Uh, I'm going to hit up uh, underdog certainty of death yeah. uh, mandarga is the author of that mandarga is the username on uh Basil and he started that blog uh, specifically like for overlooked uh and underrated factions so soul raid actually features yeah. greatly there it's funny to think of them as underrated at this point because uh they're in the in the current meta they're generally looked on as as one of the more powerful right. uh, which is cool um but uh so with that being kind of the focus, there was a, like a recent guest article about, uh, Cagra's ravagers. Sure. Um, yeah. Which definitely like that's, that's a, that's a underdog war band, not one that will score underdog all that often, but no, but uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe I guess if they are behind in objectives, but, uh, but anyway, like it, it's that, it's that sort of thing. I really like that sort of article that says, Hey, look, like, uh, there's a lot of thoughts being put into, these war bands at the top but what about these other ones is there is there something you can do to make them uh sing a little bit yeah uh, and then also most recently this uh, this i bring up mostly because it uh it brought me back to uh the the late great call it shade spire from Stephen van with uh, a card focus so man mandarga did a focus on the uh objective card silver lining um why why he thinks that uh, silver lining is overrated and really goes into a lot of numbers on it. And that's that kind of single card deep dive. I've really been missing that. So um, yeah, I, well, I wouldn't mind if they do more of that. Yeah. And I, I suppose, uh, well, it is no longer uh, being uh, supported since we already mentioned it. Call it Shadespire did some great just math uh, mm -hmm. dives in mm -hmm. sort, of, sort of doing the proof to say, Here's here's an opinion about why I think this card is better or worse than people think it is. And like, here's the numbers to say why that is actually yeah. true, Yeah, uh, which is super great because I'm not always good at stats once it's begin. Like I can do basic dice stuff, but as soon as you start thinking about like rerolls and things, I'm like, I don't actually know how to do the math. Here. <laughs> um, I've tried f figuring it out and remembering it and I can never remember it. So 
Um, always appreciated that. So, well, the well, the cards that are discussed for Call of Shadespire are uh, some that are no longer applicable to the game. There are some other uh, things there that just apply more generally. Um, so, if you if you really like that kind of like deep dive, mathy sort of crunchy uh, analysis, that is another place to go. And it's cool to see that Mandarga is taking that up. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Another cool uh, blog is the Glory Seekers. So this this is uh, done by Jacko, so one of the folks from Tabletop Sydney, um, and, uh, and also Craig, Craig is yeah right yeah. So I have not actually read a ton of what they have done, but. Uh, I'm sure you have read more. Yeah. Uh, so I I was trying to figure out a way to sort of distill. If you were saying, what what is it this blog offers? Mm-hmm. Uh, I pulled it right off their their site. So the only rule they have on this blog is no balance whining. They focus on the gameplay <laughs> side of Warhammer Underworlds, not sure. Warhammer or card balance concerns. And so it's just, uh, it's it, their idea is like, we're going to create articles that are, they're supposed to help you get better. Uh, and it will often be, uh, here is how this war band and this deck in particular performed at a local tournament. Uh, and that's always fun to see is like, here's the, here's the breakdown. Uh, here's what I took and here's, uh, what worked and what didn't, what, uh, and why like that, yeah. getting that deep dive. So, um, it's kind of fun to see those guys play on camera and then, uh, have them kind of give a, a rundown, um, just just get them from another perspective basically yeah yeah get a little bit of a probably a deeper dive too um yeah and i i definitely appreciate that kind of content where it's like we're you know because literally every single warband can win there is no warband where like you are just completely sunk from you know the outset there there's no way to approach the game and win a game like no Mm. that is not that is not a thing there's enough variance in this game and enough skill that if you really love one particular warband you just want to play those warbands you can get better with them and be better than the vast majority of other players and beat them yeah um so when people are willing to like dedicate time to showing like hey here's how this warband works here's some you know, neat tricks you can use with them and how you can actually get better with them. I think that's really cool. And I always like kind of envy people who are willing to like, just be like, I'm a purist. I only play this one war <laughs> band. I've got 200 games with this one war band. And it's like, yeah. oh, man, I wish I had that like, well, level of <laughs> <laughs> depth uh, with a single war band. But yeah, uh, 200 with one war band is, uh, we'll, we'll mention him later when we get to Reddit, but uh I, I was uh, getting some uh, chosen access tips from him. And he's like, yeah, I've got uh, 730 games or something. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> have, hmm. And I'm wondering, have I played 730 games of Underworld? period? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that is pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, where, where, where else could folks go? Uh, what is another... There's plenty of stops uh, sure. along the internet road. Uh, well, I think uh, one that's uh, a little newer, uh, if you're on the Discord, if you're on some of the those channels, you'll be more aware of this. But uh, um, if not, you you might not be know that this blog's out there. It's uh, Baconborn uh, does the Determined Effort blog. Um, mm-hmm. And Baconborn, and what I really like, uh, what he says about this is that uh, all I can offer is that I really enjoy the game and I really enjoy talking about the game. So I hope I can provide some entertainment and insights you all find worthwhile, or hopefully just spark some discussions to try and grow the community. Uh, and that's great. I think there's a misconception that to be a content creator, you have to like have a bunch of accomplishments. You have to be able to say like, well, I, uh, I won a grand clash or I, you know, uh, yeah. I, I was competing for the top of a grand class or something like that. And, um, that's not the case at all. Like we've, we've gotten lucky on a, a couple of things and done well with some, some things, but, uh, for most of the life of our podcast, we, we haven't really had much to, 
to show for it uh, as, as far as that sort of thing. Um, yeah. And that's totally fine. Right. Like, yeah, like it's, we, 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 that didn't mean there wasn't anything to be said about it. You know, that's, it's uh there's a lot of information, like this is a information dense game. And so there's a lot of things that you can take a look at anyway, which is all to say, I appreciate that, uh, bacon born can, can put that out there. Um, and, and then just like you've been saying, like dig into what you find interesting. So, uh, I think reapers are one of his favorite factions. So he's done a whole mm-hmm. lot on, on, uh, Kanan's reapers. Um, there's a lot of, there's a, a lot of discussion about where they exist in the current meta. Um, and using some of the things that blogs can leverage, like some diagrams, like if you set up here, these moves are available to you. Um, uh, stuff that, uh, that you get with a lot of reps with a particular war band. So, yeah. uh, yeah. great stuff there. Very nice. Uh, another one and, uh, not a ton of content here, um, or at least not, not in the near past, but, uh, so Flavius, uh, started the monkeys hex, uh, page. And the, the main thing that really stood out to me is he did a really cool, um, objective placement series now with the advent of Delve, Mm. um, and trying to give some strategic insight into, both like how you want to place your objectives, but just thinking about objectives in the Harrow Deep uh, era and mm. um, some really some really good uh, deep analysis there that I think is pretty great. Um, we've actually seen a number of other objective placement series, and I'm sure he took some inspiration from those, uh, but but it's cool to see it updated to the new um the new mechanics. Um, and, and then he's also got a number of other things. Uh, but like I said, I haven't seen anything posted too recently. So hopefully he's just taken a little bit of a break and has some more stuff coming when uh, inspiration strikes. Yeah. And that uh, objective placement, like like you said, that's that's kind of tailor built for the visual mediums. So yeah. yep. Um, yep. Something like that where you can sit and look at a blog. There's probably a way you could probably get a pretty good YouTube video um, going, but uh, uh, this is this is really good stuff. And it's something that I realize is a pretty big gap in my play right now. Um, back in back in the pre Harrow Deep days, I, I felt like I was pretty good with board placement. had a had a pretty good sense of how to do it. I'm I'm still flailing a bit. I will accidentally do some really good stuff and be like, I need to figure out how to have how to <laughs> do that on purpose in future. Um, and some of it is uh, doing doing a little bit of study. Yeah, the study studies uh, content like this. So yeah, I have certainly accidentally with the new placement rules. I have certainly accidentally set myself up in such a way that my opponent will then place a token and be like, well, you now can't place anything else on your side of the board. And it's like, oh, yeah, that was a mistake. It's <laughs> <laughs> like without thinking about it, I, I didn't leave myself a sec like a third spot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So definitely some more uh, some more reps needed there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then ooh, just just a couple other things. So <laughs> again, uh, we got content from John Wynn Reese. Can you roll a crit um, again? As with all the others, uh, not as much stuff lately. I would say mostly just um, putting out uh you know, when new stuff comes out, when he's got the, yep. uh, you know, early, early look at stuff just to give some uh, opinions. And then one that I had not heard of before, um, doesn't look like they're really super underworlds focused, but have a few different underworlds articles. So maybe they'll continue to put out more stuff is a blog called a handful of dice. Yeah. Um, well, what's interesting about these guys is that that's true. They're not purely underworlds focused there's a lot of different warhammer content on there that being yeah. said like if you look at the you know percentage of their content is devoted to underworlds you're like oh okay well you know it's a it's a smaller chunk they have 10 underworlds articles out this year that is you know yeah that's solid pretty close to two a month just a little shy of like that's that's a pretty good output and there's some uh, there's some interesting takes there's a dive into the far striders um mm. there's a there's some new release stuff. Uh, there's one 
uh, it made me laugh. I haven't read it yet. I definitely will because I do like this war band. But it, it was uh, how to win with Ripa and Rivals. In my head, my answer is like, <laughs> like just play them. Yeah, <laughs> just show up. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're pretty um, good. Yeah, but uh, but I was like, I was pleasantly surprised. I, I thought I was going to go to this blog and be like, ah, they've got two articles over the past year yeah. and a half or something like that. But it was it was much better than that. So uh, add that one to your to your uh, bookmarks or For such. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then in the defunct category, unfortunately, you have to say Steel City Underworlds <sighs> has not been putting out any content. Uh, yeah, it hurts recently. my heart it's so bad. Uh, they had created a plethora of pleasant content uh many many good analyses it's it's too bad that they are not doing anything with the game right now um i really hope that they come back and put out more content for this game because i think they added a lot of good uh context and opinions I think it's worth, uh, well, to me, it's worth mentioning what some of what made them great was the uh, uh, the interaction they had within their own group. Yes. So when they would do uh, a review of like, here's the universals that came out with, I don't know, Frothcorn <laughs> or whatever, uh, be one person kind of doing ratings and then um, interjection, often Tom Bunn or yeah, like there'd be <laughs> exactly those great. It was so entertaining uh, yeah. and, it, and it captured kind of the spirit of their group. Uh, and I'd really like to find a way to, to, uh, do that again, or for somebody to, to harness that energy. Um, cause that's a, that was a really fun, uh, on those release days, there's a lot of information to cover those first impressions. Uh, and I think the first impressions are healthier when they're discussed, um, instead of just kind of off the dome. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we, uh, flag no gets no glory in here as a, you know, here's what, here's how deep you can go. If you decide like, Hey, I am going to. <laughs> mono one war band and yeah. to be fair you know i occasionally got sidetracked onto some other things got excited about uh, a couple other things but it was like take a look at each release through the spectrum of one war band so yeah i'm playing gets uh what does this new universal release mean specifically for gets what does this new season mean specifically for gets what does this uh forsaken and restricted list mean specifically for gets <laughs> um and that's that's yeah. a really cool way and that's you you're guaranteed to kind of have your own space if you want to do something like that so for sure um there was great humor in that one and then a, a really good idea for a blog too so. it is a really great idea i mean if there are other folks out there who are super dedicated to one warband and are like i i have a ton of knowledge about this warband you should consider writing about some of that if you have the free time it doesn't have to be anything like earth shattering but <laughs> you might you might be surprised how helpful it could be to other folks who want to learn more about that warband. Mm. And just a, a quick shout out to call it shades by again. I know mentioned them before, but uh, some fun stuff there. Uh, yeah. And then uh, we just have one more section of articles. Um, so some social media pages, this, this is not any particular content creators, although we have one shout out for Reddit. Um, but, but there are a couple different Facebook pages, um, that are just community pages for underworlds. One is literally called the Warhammer underworlds community. (laughs) And the other one is just Warhammer underworlds. They're both just as they, as you'd expect, just a place for people to post questions, tips, painting, whatever, Mm. um, and just have a place to talk about Underworlds. Um, And then we have Discord. Um, So for folks who are not aware, Discord is basically just um, an app-based chat room. Uh, You can have a bunch of different uh, channels within a Discord page and... So there are a couple different ones for Warhammer Underworlds. So there's just the Warhammer Underworlds Discord. And then there's also one for the Vassal uh, community, which is not necessary. You wouldn't even necessarily have to be doing anything with Vassal. There's plenty of just general discussion. Hmm. Um, Plenty of people post their content there as well. So it's a good thing to go check out if you want to know when there's new content from a number of different creators. Honestly, that's that's how I find out about most of it is I, I just yeah. have notifications on for that. Yep. And then uh, when somebody puts something new, I'm like, oh, cool. 
Uh, uh, agreed. So um, that is a, is a great way to know that something new is coming out. And if you are a content creator, it's worth, uh, I think that gets a lot of eyeballs there. So. I would agree. Um, and, and I think it, another nice thing about it is that the, those chats just sort of hang out. I don't know if there's ever a time that it clears out uh, posts. So you can like scroll back for ages and find old stuff in there that people have posted um, which can sometimes be nice if you're like, I don't have time to look at this right now, but I know where I can go find it later if I need exactly. to. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we have our own Discord as well. Um, it, it is just a subsection of the greater Mortal Realms Discord, though. So um, while you can come and talk Warhammer Underworlds <laughs> with us, uh, you can find all sorts of other uh, Warhammer related topics as well. Yeah. Uh, and I should say, you know, many, many uh, different content creators will have their own. I think. Uh, oh, yeah. I know Path yeah, of Glory sure. has one. I know uh, Battle Mallet has one, all that sort of thing. I, If you had to pick one, I think that that Vassal one is the one that is like the yes. largest volume of uh, engagement. Um, so it's that's where I spend most of my time. And it's great. Uh, there's some really good rules discussion. If you want to get smart about rules, you can get yep. some questions in there. And there's some folks who really kind of dug into things in a way. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot by, by kind of browsing through those. Um, Very and, uh, much so. Um, yeah. Some interesting like takes uh, some, some things that there's no clear answers for, but you can get a lot of uh, information to say like, how would you, you know, adjudicate this, which is also useful. And then um, I think the best thing about that vassal or about, about that discord is that you get people from all over the world. And so there's mm. people talking in there all the time, <laughs> yeah. uh, which can be a bad thing. Uh, you might want to set some of the notification manage, rules. manage your notifications. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it'll be important. Otherwise, you'll be getting dinged all the time. But uh, that being said, if you ever are just like, huh, I was thinking about this thing, let's see if anybody else has any thoughts you can pretty much post whenever you want and expect to get an answer almost immediately uh which is pretty great i think so great yeah. great little community great place to just talk game um yeah uh and then there is also a healthy reddit community people post about warhammer underworlds um, number of different topics. And then Weth Lab has some dedicated pages there where he has put up articles um, similar to what we were mentioning before. Uh, he had a deployment, an objective deployment, uh, and I guess actually just warband deployment as well. Um, articles in there with visuals to sort of show this is how I've been doing it. Those are some of the lessons I've learned and just some some cool visual content there. Um, I think that just about brings us to one of the last one, the deck builders. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean, uh, this, this is big because, um, these are all community built. Uh, these are not supported in any way by games workshop. So, a uh, huge, huge shout out, huge thanks to all the folks who are doing the maintenance and development for these websites to keep them running and to keep them updated um you're probably familiar with most of these already but if you're not we'll just run them through we got uh underworlds db um i will say that underworlds db well it is the one that i like using the best especially now that you can link it up to a google account so you can have it uh, available across devices does not always do great on mobile at least not in my experience. So sometimes it's a little hard to pull up your deck list on your phone. Uh, Warhammer Underworld's Deckers. Uh, it's actually one that I have only checked out once or twice, but it has a nice interface, I think. Um, and there's a number of folks who seem to really love it. So if you're not a fan of Underworld's DB for whatever reason, um, feel free to go check out Underworld's Deckers. And then there's also the, I guess you'd probably say this, wunderworlds.club. Um, I'm actually not very familiar with this one. I think uh, I think Alex Gonzalez might use it. I, I, there was somebody who was sending me, I'm like, what is this? This looks pretty 
nice. Yeah. Uh, so I, we, we talk, we, we give a lot of shout outs to, um, underworld's DB for good reason. They do an incredible job, get, um, uh, get stuff out quickly, kind of heroic effort to, to get updates there. We love it. There's people who love the other builders too. Um, yeah. and it's just that we're not as familiar with those other ones. So, yeah. uh, yes. if you're starting out, try them out. I've, I'm kind of like invested in underworld's DB now because, uh, all my decks are saved there, but, uh, um, it's, uh, it's worth checking out some of these, these other ones and just finding the one that really fits for you and the device that whatever device you use to build. With. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I, I guess it's worth mentioning, uh, for maybe folks who aren't aware, most of these deck builders do also have databases of tournament winning decks or even just tournament decks that participated, um, so if you're ever just like, huh, I wonder if I could like just pull a shell of a deck that I could start from rather than trying to start from scratch. Uh, most of these deck builders have that available to you, um, which is really nice. Um, and then there's also, I haven't used it, but Underworld's DB has like an auto magic deck builder thing where you just punch in like, I want a championship <laughs> deck for this uh, faction. And then it just spits out a deck for you i don't quite know how it does that uh, and i don't know what the results look like but um that's also a thing that you can do which is kind of cool yeah yeah all right i believe that does it um again uh we we do not intentionally uh miss anybody here so if you are a content creator if you are aware of anybody else's content and you think that folks should know about it uh let us know so that we can make sure that it is shouted out uh in our next step and linked up here uh in our show notes because we want to make sure that any content out there is accessible to folks um because everybody brings a little bit of a different take and everything that I have ever uh, checked out from this community has always been very good, very entertaining. Um, so if there's more there, then that's all for the better. Yeah. Uh, and what I would say is if you've listened uh, to this episode and you thought, hey, this gives me an idea or, hey, I've been thinking about being a content creator uh, for quite a while and there's you feel like there's something... Um, something holding you back or slowing you down a little bit. Maybe it's a, you know, a technical thing. Maybe you really want to do a podcast, but you're not really sure where to start. I drop us a line. I, I would love to help you. Uh, if, if yeah. it's just pointing you in the direction of someone who's smarter than me, which is going to be <laughs> often the case, uh, as far as, as doing something, um, we, we love, uh, we like making this show, but we also like consuming the content that other people create. And so, um, if you need a hand, let us know and we'll see what we can do to help out. Um, cause we'd love to see more out there. Absolutely. And that just about wraps us up. So as we mentioned, uh, please get in touch with us and you can do so at WTH cast on Twitter or what the heck's cast at gmail.com. If you are interested in any of the other content that is put out by our larger community, uh, and by community, I mean our local group. Mm -hmm. The Mortal Realms, uh, head on over to our website, themortalrealms.com. Uh, our show is all there. Uh, Davy's Hexodus pod or <laughs> Hexodus blog is going to be available there uh, if you're interested in any of his rundowns of those warbands. Uh, and then any other uh, Age of Sigmar adjacent content. Um, we've got stuff from every aspect of Age of Sigmar. So uh, if that is your jam go check it out um as always uh we want to just thank everybody um that we are you know I involved with mortal realms um nothing that we got obviously for this show but you know without getting some of the preview copies from games workshop some of the stuff that we do wouldn't be possible so as always thanks to them um Coming up next, we are hoping to have some interviews with some of the recent tournament winners for some of the uh, online tournaments that have been going on. Um, 
stay yeah, tuned. A, <laughs> yeah, the Vassal Brawl, we'd like to snag. We don't, there's not yet a winner there. Um, yeah. And then uh, we're going to try and uh, snag, maybe there was a couple events in the UK just recently, the uh, uh, a mini clash and, and such, and it'd be awesome to kind of scoop that so we'll, we'll see yeah. if we can make that happen and uh get some get some interviews some high level players there for you definitely and and it's been a while i mean like yeah there have been tournaments but like i feel like i feel like stuff's really starting to spin back up which is great because uh you know everything kind of went into hibernation there for a little while so yeah really excited to see more tournaments and excited to see what people brewed up all right, Phil, are you ready for your favorite part of the podcast? Oh, my absolute <laughs> favorite part every two week period. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is this is your uh, flavor text quiz. All, All right. right. So I did select it specifically for this topic. Okay. It is an upgrade. Sure. It's from season one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and I'm trying to remember if it got restricted at one point. That's that information may be uh, lost to to things, but. Uh, so, so there's, there's three clues for you. Um, <laughs> season one upgrade may have been restricted, uh, and is, has a, uh, card appropriate to this subject. So in the darkness of Shadespire, aid can come from unexpected quarters. And I'll give Help, you one more. Helpful whispers. Oh, oh, he got it. All right, cool. Yeah. Nice. Well, <laughs> <good dig. laughs> All right. Well uh, done. I remember you playing that card against me a lot. Uh, oh, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, it's a good one. We, we yeah. got like a new version of it to now, too, which is pretty we do. great. Yeah. Big, uh, uh, big, big fan of that. We're the far striders. So. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is a, I, I'm actually a little impressed with myself for remembering that one so quickly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good memories. Uh, yeah, good dig. <laughs> All right. Uh, your recommended listening for this episode is What Would the Community Think? It's the uh, title track from the uh, album of the same name by Cat Power. Very nice. All right. For What the Hex, I've been Phil. And I've been Davey. actually was a shorter episode uh, a pretty quick one and hopefully yeah. folks appreciate it <laughs> it's a little they different better. Yeah. <laughs>